நண்பர்களுக்கு வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் This program is brought to you by Guruji TV. This YouTube video is a translation of the Tamil video of our renowned astrologer Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version that is the Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. This is Deepa and I am going to present the English version of the Tamil video. In the last video I explained about how Venus will function when it is in conjunction with different planets in Pisces and when it remains alone and also the effects of Jupiter in Pisces. I had also explained Maha Periyava's birth chart. In this video, I am going to explain the effects of the planets Saturn, Rahu and Ketu in the house of Pisces and I am going to teach you some rare concepts of astrology. Pisces is a sign of duality. If only you observe very keenly and closely the position of the planets in Pisces sign which represents the duality, you can make accurate predictions. The planet that I am going to explain first of all is the effect of Saturn in the house of Pisces. When Saturn resides in house of Pisces, it will make the person to be spiritually inclined. When Saturn is not affected at all, then it delivers great spiritual wisdom and it makes a person a Siddhar or Sannyasi. When Saturn is in conjunction with Ketu in house of Pisces, then it is considered to be more auspicious for spiritualism. The person will be truly wise. Definitely this person will be inclined towards spiritualism. The person will work as a priest in a temple or will work as a foreteller, prophecy teller in the temple. During the major planetary period of Saturn, definitely all these will happen. When Ketu or Saturn resides in house of Jupiter, then the person will be truly spiritual and to make further predictions, you have to check which house is the Pisces to the Ascendant. You have to check where the Saturn resides, in which house it resides to your Ascendant. The fundamental concept is that when Saturn resides in the house of Pisces, it is good. When Saturn resides in the house of a natural benefic, then it means the person is completely disillusioned or free from attachments. Because the house of a benefic can turn the sluggishness of the Saturn into another form. It will turn the mind of the natal towards the direction of spiritualism. It is always good when Saturn resides in the house of a benefic like in uh, Sagittarius or Pisces than in its own house. Rather being in its own house when Saturn resides in the house of Pisces or Sagittarius, it will deliver more benefits. Because when Saturn resides in the house of Pisces, from both of its houses that is Capricorn and Aquarius, it will be in the third house and the second house. Let me explain this. For Capricorn, the Saturn will be in the third house and for Aquarius, it will be in the second house when Saturn resides in Pisces. When Saturn resides in the Pisces house, it is in the third house to its own house Capricorn, which is considered to be a neutral house. For Aquarius, when Saturn resides in the house of Pisces, it will be in the second house to Aquarius, which is Panaparasthana. The second house, fifth house, eighth house and eleventh house are called Panaparasthanas. Therefore, when Saturn resides in the house of Pisces and Sagittarius, it is really favorable 
provided it is not pabatva saturn should not be in connection with mars etc i say that when saturn resides in the second house it will affect the wealth family etc but why i also say in contrary to this that when saturn resides in house of pisces in second house for aquarius ascendant it is good the reason is when saturn resides in the house of pisces the malefic tendency of spoiling the family and the wealth of the family will be reduced because saturn resides in the house of a benefic saturn is a rowdy try to understand this way as there is a difference between a rowdy who has consumed alcohol and who has not consumed alcohol when saturn resides in the house of pisces it behaves like a rowdy who has not drunk because the house of pisces controls the very natural behavior of the saturn saturn is a rowdy it is a bad man it spoils it delivers unfavorable results yet when it resides in house of pisces saturn becomes calm it is almost like in a sleeping state or let us imagine that saturn as an alcoholic who has not drunk therefore when saturn resides in the house of pisces it is like a man whose venue or residing place is a temple the person will be without any attachments and completely detached sluggishness is a very basic nature of the saturn which will be modified by the pisces the saturn will not give a lot of worse effects in addition to this when saturn has got jupiter or venus connection when it resides in house of pisces it delivers enormous good effects if saturn is in connection with malefic like mars or rahu then it will deliver very worse effects when saturn is in connection with ketu in the house of pisces it delivers added spiritual qualities when saturn resides in the house of pisces and the person is in judiciary system then such native will definitely tell very very few lies the person will tell lies only for his needs only where it is necessary and the person will not say unnecessary lies this is the way you have to make predictions see how i make predictions for different planets when venus resides in house of pisces we are making a different prediction and when saturn resides in pisces based on its significance and the house where it resides we make different predictions for the native of capricorn and aquarius ascendant when saturn resides in house of pisces that is when saturn resides in second house to aquarius and third house to the capricorn it is really a great benefit to sum up when saturn resides in house of pisces it is somewhat favorable the next planet that i'm going to explain is rahu what will happen when rahu resides in the house of pisces rahu is in the house of a benefic how you have to predict the effects of rahu for the native of libra ascendant rahu should not reside in the house of pisces i often explain about rahu yet many people still gets confused when i explain about rahu you don't try to understand at all because first of all grasping what i explain itself will be a little challenge the great scientist einstein had explained about deflection of light or bending of light not everybody could grasp this concept the scientist albert einstein was known for his intelligence he was a born intellect was the greatest scientist of the last century 
He had explained the fourth dimension, the time, was the greatest scientist of the last century and the theory says, that is the deflection of light says, that in the absence of a mass, the light follows a straight line from the star to the observer. In presence of the mass, the light ray is bent and the light reaches the observer from a slightly different direction. The other fellow scientists who lived during his period cannot understand his concept at all. First of all, they couldn't get hold of the concept at all. As per Einstein's theory, in space, when a big star approaches another, the light follows a straight line and in the presence of the mass, the light ray is bent. Nobody could understand his concepts. Until his death, nobody could understand his concept. Once a solar eclipse happened post the death of Albert Einstein during 1980s. I don't know whether the place is Australia or New Zealand. All the scientists gathered and they were waiting to check whether theory of deflection of light could be proved or not. As per the theory of deflection of light of Albert Einstein, during the solar eclipse, the stars that are behind the sun should be visible to the naked eye. Therefore, all the scientists gathered to check whether Albert Einstein's theory of light of deflection is true or not. So they gathered together in the southern pole of the earth where the eclipse was more visible. During the solar eclipse, the scientists were able to observe all the stars that are behind the sun and it is on that day the scientists realized the importance of the theory of deflection of light of Albert Einstein and then Albert Einstein became one of the famous scientists in the world. I quoted this example to say that the concept of Rahu is something like that of Einstein's light bending theory. Rahu behaves like the dispositor of the house or the planet that is in conjunction with and it also behaves like something you cannot easily understand. If Rahu resides in the house of Pisces, then it will be just transformed as Jupiter and it will deliver deaths, diseases and enemies for the native of Libra ascendant. You cannot make predictions based on the concept that Rahu will deliver benefits if the dispositor of the house is a benefic. It will definitely go invalid. The concept that Rahu will deliver benefits in the 6th house will become invalid in this particular case. Having said this, in general, when Rahu resides in the house of Sagittarius and Pisces, it is good because it resides in the house of Jupiter. In addition to this, when Rahu has connection with Venus, but not conjunction, please remember, because when Rahu is in conjunction with Venus, what would happen? It will spoil the significance of Venus. So, when Rahu gets connected in other ways like aspect of Venus, it is more beneficial. In the same fashion, when Rahu is in connection with Jupiter, not in conjunction with Jupiter, it is favorable. Or if it has connection with waxing moon or the full moon, then it is favorable. Rahu should not be in conjunction with a benefic like Venus or Jupiter because definitely when Rahu is in conjunction with benefic, it will affect the significance of the benefic planet. In certain situations when Rahu is in connection with a benefic, when Rahu resides in 6th house, it is not considered to be beneficial. Rahu will deliver its very worst effects. Please try to understand the significance of the planet based on its house effects. Therefore, when Rahu resides in the house of Pisces, for the native of Libra ascendant, in certain situations, Rahu will not deliver benefits.
Yet, there is an antidote for this planetary position. You have to check whether the dispositor, that is the lord of the sixth house. There are antidotes when Rahu resides in the sixth house for the native of Libra ascendant. Rahu that resides in the house of Pisces is a good boy because it resides in the house of Jupiter. According to your ascendant, Rahu that resides in house of Pisces will deliver house effects and the significance of the dispositor completely. If Rahu resides in house of Pisces, then if major planetary period of Rahu happens, in order to make predictions, imagine that the major planetary period of Jupiter happens for 34 years because Rahu behaves like Jupiter. In Vimshotri Dasha system, Rahu and Jupiter's Dasha come subsequently, so I said 34 years. Therefore, when Rahu resides in house of Pisces, it delivers the house effects and significance just like Jupiter. Therefore, you have to check which house is this house to your ascendant. In general, Rahu delivers its benefits when it resides in Aries, Taurus, Cancer, Virgo and Capricorn. Though it is said so, when Rahu resides in house of Sagittarius, it is called Kodanda Rahu. Like the Kodanda Rahu delivers benefits, when Rahu resides in the house of Pisces, Rahu can deliver benefits. Rahu is a planet that reflects the characteristics exactly as its dispositor and it also reflects the characteristics of the planet with which it is in conjunction. And also it reflects the characteristics of the planets by which it gets aspected as well. In addition to this, Rahu also behaves or reflects the characteristics of the planets that are in quadrant to its house. Having said all these, when Rahu resides in house of Pisces, it will reflect characteristics of Jupiter and it behaves just like Jupiter. You have to make predictions based on which responsibility Jupiter is assigned in your natal chart. If you understand this point, you can definitely make correct predictions. The final planet that I am going to explain now is Ketu. Since this is the last video regarding the explanation of the effects of the planets in different houses, I am really taking a long time to give my explanation. I have really taken a long time to explain this video. It is said to be auspicious when Ketu resides in the 12th house of the Kala Purusha. Ketu is said to be a planet that gives salvation. The 12th house indicates what happens post our death. These are the facts yet to be proved. Astrology is a proven science and I am sharing only the facts with you in whose domain I have researched. I really avoid certain things to share because if only I know I have experienced 100% the proven facts then only I love to share it with you. If I am not aware then I will not definitely share any concepts with you. The 12th house is said to be the house of salvation. I am one who cannot really do research regarding this concept whether this house really gives salvation. This is the concept conveyed by our sages by their spiritual wisdom that is obtained by penance, meditation and trance. When there is a concept of Purva Punya in astrology, it conveys that the last birth exists. However, I prefer to avoid certain things that I am not aware of, I have not experienced. I avoid giving explanations on such topics as knowledge is not complete without practical experience. I am not aware of this topic. Ketu will deliver benefits when it is in the 12th house and when it is Subhatva like connection of Venus or Jupiter 
and without any Pabatwa connection like connection of Saturn or Mars. In general, Ketu grows and Rahu shrinks. Therefore, when Ketu resides in the 12th house, it will not deliver much worse effects. It will lead a person to be wise. Ketu that resides in house of Jupiter is like a Sannyasi Ketu. When Ketu resides in house of Venus, it signifies enjoyment of luxuries and pleasures. When Ketu resides in house of Jupiter, it gives a life of an ascetic. It will deliver complete detachment from the worldly desires to the person. Most importantly, when Ketu resides in house of Pisces, the person will never incline or tend to spoil the life of others. In case if a person spoils the life of others, definitely Ketu would have been aspected by Mars or if the person spoils the life of others, it would have got the connection of the Lord of the 6th and 8th house. Among the malefic planets Mars, Saturn and Rahu, when Ketu is in connection with Saturn, it makes the Saturn to gain Sukshma strength. When Ketu is in conjunction with Mars, it will make the Mars to gain Sukshma strength. However, Ketu will be affected. You have to check how the major planetary period of Ketu will be. That is the point. Therefore, as per the original dictum, when Ketu resides in 12th house and in connection with Jupiter or Venus, it is said that the person will attain salvation. This is the 12th house of the Kala Purusha. In general, when Rahu and Ketu resides in the 12th house, they will not deliver much worse effects. It is said that Rahu or Ketu will deliver benefits only in 3rd, 6th, 10th and 11th houses. However, from my own experience, I would say Rahu or Ketu will deliver benefits when they are in 3rd house, 11th house and 12th house, not even 10th house. When Rahu or Ketu resides in the 3rd house, 11th house, 12th house, they will definitely deliver benefits. I don't mention 6th house in this list these days because Rahu and Ketu will deliver a lot of worse effects when they are in the 6th house provided they are not Subhatva. Therefore, when Ketu is in conjunction with Jupiter in Pisces, it is said to be Kela Yoga and it will deliver a lot of benefits. Ketu is a planet that provokes to do more that grows the planet. Therefore, when it is in conjunction with Jupiter, it provokes Jupiter to deliver more money. That is why it is called as Kela Yoga. That is the conjunction is called as Kela Yoga. Having said all these, when Ketu resides in house of Pisces, it delivers benefits. Since you guys are really, really curious and passionate about astrology, I'm planning to publish videos like how the nine different planets will deliver its effects based on each ascendant. I'm thinking about whether I can make a brief video of 30 minutes and explain which planetary position will be helpful for each ascendant. I'm planning to publish videos for the 12 ascendants as the next step. In parallel to this, I'm also publishing many videos regarding Subhatva and Pabhatva of different planets. I have published videos regarding Pabhatva and Subhatva of Mercury and I have also published videos of Pabhatva and Subhatva of Saturn. I'm planning to publish more videos that will explain how to make predictions. One of my premium video subscribers asked an important question and I've explained to his question as a premium video. I know that many of you definitely request to publish it as a common video because unknowingly I have explained a lot of important points in that video. So I have planned to publish that premium video as a public video, post 
publishing these videos, the ones that I told recently. I'm also going to publish the Pabatva and Subhatva of every individual planet. All these will be definitely published as public videos on YouTube. My best wishes to all the keen learners. Well, this is question time. Which planetary position will help a person who prays or wishes wholeheartedly the well-being of all the beings in this world? Please write your answers in the comment section of this video. The link to Aditya Guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of Google Play Store app is also given in the description box that is available for only Android users. The Tamil version of this video is also available. Please check the description box. Write your feedback to astro.writetous at gmail.com. Thank you.